Well, I thought the last video was the last video. <laughs> oh, gee. Uh, can't win them all. Apparently it wasn't. This one is. Oh, I hope it is. Oh, dear Lord God, no, but I'm, I'm tuckered out. I remember um, many years ago, <laughs> some nutter uh, in the Sunday school system at a uh, little church in Didsbury. <laughs> uh, oh, they were pretty hard pressed for a Sunday school teacher, I guarantee you. And they said, uh, Jim, would you uh, teach a Sunday school class? I said, sure. Why? <laughs> I have no idea. And uh, except I always try to do what people ask me to do. <laughs> and uh, anyways, I, I, I spoke at the Sunday school class and I was kind of hanging out with the Lord before it started. The kids were walking in. They were in their late teens, teens, late teens. And uh, I said, uh, you uh, have, have a somewhat of a general idea of what you want me to say. <laughs> and he said, yes. Well, I said, oh, I'm so glad of that. I said, let's go for it. You and I, creator of this whole universe and this Irish guy. I said, uh, how do you want me to do this? He said, go to the blackboard. Uh, it was green. <laughs> well, when I was young, they were black. There go the name blackboard. And uh, I wrote on the board, uh, the Christians uh, that were spelled W-E-R-E, -E, period. The Christians that were, and I, I said to the Lord, uh, an interesting title. And then he went to work, the Holy Spirit, that part of the Trinity that we, we, we don't give much credit to, um, but the Holy Spirit, he, uh, he reveals to us who and what Jesus the Christ really is, and he also reveals to us who and what our creator actually is, and so I, I asked the kids, uh, could you, uh, take a few moments in silence and um, uh, make a list in your own heart, soul, spirit, mind, how many people you remember as having walked with the Lord and who are now no longer walking with the Lord. To the best of your understanding, I said, don't be judgmental, but um, think about it. So I gave them a few minutes. I looked around, I don't know, it might have been 15 or 20, 16 and 18 year old kids. And I uh, looked at the first one, I said, how many can you remember? He gave me the number, may have been a she for all I know, it's been a long time. And uh, it'd be about 1979. And uh, we compiled an extensive list of people who once um, had walked, purported by their own admission to have walked with God and seemingly now at that point in time in 79, uh, we're no longer walking with the Lord. It's not judgmental, children. Um, as I said, by their own admission, okay? I wanted to know why. What, what is it? What led uh, 
them to, and it was an extensive list, let me tell you. What led them uh, to set aside, um, seemingly set aside, their relationship with God? I mean, people look at me and I, I, I don't go to church. I, I mean, if I were near Center Street in Calgary, I'd, I'd go there. Um, I just haven't found that little niche, niche where we're in a fit up here in Fort Mac. I don't know if I'll ever find it. But it does not mean that my relationship with God, I, I look at my Bible, I can hardly see it without my glasses on. And, uh, but the depth of my relationship with my father is it's quite deep. And I wondered, uh, that day we we reviewed uh, what the people, the kids thought uh, were the reasons, the justification for so many of their friends and mine uh, who no longer walked with God. I uh, had the privilege and the honor last night of talking with uh, two of my sisters. Uh, I got the names and numbers of uh, numbers of two old friends of mine, one down uh, west of, west of uh, Didsbury. Uh, we'll just call him Dwayne. And uh, I contacted another man whom I held in the deepest of respect uh, in 1978. Uh, when I first moved to Alberta, his first name was John. Is John? Thank God he's still alive. And then this morning I got up and I, 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 I could not get this out of my mind. I mean, I, I, I wanted to find a way to touch people's hearts, and uh, I, I tried tracking down my cousins over in Ireland. I couldn't do it. Uh, Goethe. I think, uh, but I couldn't remember her last name. Uh, she's a, I, I think she, she was a Campbell, uh, which were our cousins. Uh, the Campbells moved into my great granddad's cottage on Hooley, Hooley Hill in County Down in 1857. Thank God it's still in the family. I actually went back and stood in that cottage and, uh, my great granddad, he and his lady, walked the seven miles down to Warren Point and climbed on a coffin ship in 1857 to come to Canada, and they made it. You might say, well, of course they did. Well, no. One out of every three people that climbed on those coffin ships died before they hit the Canadian coast and, I mean, landed. Okay. So anyways, I uh, did everything I could in my power to track down my family over in Ireland. I wanted, I wanted to use the opportunity to say uh, to someone in Ireland, hey, listen to my junk, eh? Uh, listen to my YouTube stuff. And, uh, but I couldn't, I couldn't track them down. I did track a cousin down whose name is Carol. And uh, fortunately, she's going to Ireland in a couple of weeks, but she's going to the south of Ireland. Our family all came from the north. You ever consider your friends who once walked with God, who, as it appears, and or by their own admission, aren't so doing now? I, uh, I had a lady and her husband uh, her first name was Lillian, and his first name was Wayne. And they lived next door to uh, my mom and my dad uh, when I was 18. And uh, they were good people. Uh, Wayne actually uh, uh, framed in one of my houses, uh, my second house uh, that I built on my days off. I was... Uh, 
energetic. I still am. Uh, but I built houses on my day off because I was bored. Didn't know what to do with myself. Couldn't appear in town where I worked. Um, not working. I mean, that was a measure of a man and I would sneak away fishing or I'd, as I say, work on my house. I called uh, the East Coast this morning and I spoke to uh, Lillian and uh, I said, uh, I have thought of, of you and your first husband, Wayne, uh, many times, I, I tried to track Wayne down oh, uh, six, eight, ten years ago, and uh, I did get to speak to him. Uh, I did not have the privilege and the honor of getting to know why it was that uh, he walked away from uh, his relationship with God. Your friends who have walked away uh, from their relationship with God have you asked them why? Uh, it's it's critical. Um, Charles Templeton was a very wealthy man back in the early, early 70s. And um, he uh, drove his little Rolls Royce. I don't know if he drove it or he had a chauffeur. Um, but I spoke to him and I said, I said, sir, uh, uh, you used to be a pastor in a very, very big church in uh, Toronto. He said, yes. I said, sir, uh, what, what happened uh, to cause you to choose to walk away from your creator? And he said, <laughs> get this, I mean, because you're wealthy doesn't mean you're smart, and, uh, but usually it does. Uh, he said that he had prayed for four or five months in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that God would specifically answer a prayer of his. And, and he said when he did not answer, he chose to no longer believe in the name of Jesus Christ. And I thought, you dummy, <laughs> you, 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 you run a Rolls Royce and you're on W5, and, uh, but you're a dummy because you say God didn't answer you? Yes, he did. Whatever you were praying for, God said, not yet. Simple. So, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how to rescue the perishing, uh, but I do know how to encourage people to consider putting their faith and trust in God through accepting Jesus the Christ as their Lord and Savior. But it does come down to your choice, yours alone. No one can make it for you. In scripture, there's no purgatory, okay? Well, in scripture, there's no Catholic, there's no Protestant, there's no Muslim. Just saying. But there is God, and there is his son, and there is you. So... How are you going to protect yourself from falling by the wayside? I'll give you a few cl uh, clues, hints. Humble yourself and pray. Get down on your knees. Say, God, I'm screwing up here. I need your strength. I need your power. Not to do great things, but just to survive to stay alive, to live, to believe, uh, to purpose in my heart to do and accomplish something that might be looked upon and remembered by those who are around us as being good. I started out making these 
YouTube video so that my grandchildren would have a chance to get to know me. Okay. And my one grandson, he said, oh, Grandpa, you are so funny. And I thought, so much for trying to be serious here. <laughs> If you're not sure that you can make it through to eternity, ask God to strengthen you. Ask God to help you. Or ask God to take you home early. Because it is more important that you make it through into eternity than it is that you do any other thing on this earth. And if you think you're in trouble, if you think you're hurting, if you think things are going bad for you, if you think that things should be a lot better, then you stop right there. And you stop thinking about yourself. And you start thinking about someone else who is in worse shape than you are, who needs your encouragement. They're there. You just have to look for them. Okay. I'm trying to think, is there one more thing that my creator would have me to say? Ready? Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. So listen, I put my hand on my Bible. You say, well, what do I trust in? Read the bloody book, children. Okay. I mean, come on. If you can say, after you read this Bible 25 times in a row, if you haven't picked up and gleaned the truth from it, <laughs> well, you're you're in you're in pretty rough shape because the truth will set you free. Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me." He said, "There's no other name given unto man whereby ye must be saved." John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I used to do scuba and snorkeling, otherwise I could never have finished that sentence with that breath that was half expended before I started. If you have never said this simple short prayer, God forgive me, I accept that Jesus the Christ, the Savior, the Redeemer, Jesus Christ, took my place on the cross for my sins. I am sorry. Help me to be what you want me to be. Well, you're, <laughs> you're, if you haven't prayed that one, children, you're, um, well, the only word I can think of is, I shouldn't say it, I guess. But while you're breathing, there's hope. You have enough guts. Say that prayer, God, forgive me. I accept that Jesus took my place on the cross for my sins. I'm sorry. Help me to be what you want me to be. This is the last video today, children. I'm tuckered. Okay. Cowboy Jim up in Fort Mac. Over and out, children. You want to live until you die? It's up to you. It's up to you. Where you spend eternity is up to you as well. God bless you, eh? God bless you. God bless.